this is Fred, your found footage fiend, with my latest review for foundfootagecritic.com, home of the world's largest database of found footage films and reviews. And don't forget to check out povhorror.com, the world's only VOD streaming service 100% dedicated to found footage films. They're available on Amazon, Fire TV, Roku TV, Apple TV, Android Mobile, iOS, and visit povhorror.com for more information. Today I'll be reviewing Death of a Vlogger, found footage film that came out in 2020, released by Gravity Adventures. And this was written and directed by Graham Hughes himself. Now we have quite a few people in this movie, but I'm gonna stick basically to like the main cast that we kind of follow around. We have Graham Hughes who plays himself. He's an ambitious vlogger who would do anything for that fame, you know, anything for that, for to make him laugh, or as they say, to further his career. We have Annabelle Logan who plays Aaron in the movie, and I believe it's his friend. There could be a little bit more there in the movie. I'm not entirely sure, but as far as I know, it seems that they're just best friends. Oh, Steve. <laughs> Steve, Steve, Steve. We also have Patty Kondracki, who plays Steve in the movie, and like a paranormal investigator, a YouTuber, like, you know, oh man, he annoyed, as somebody also says in the movie, Steve annoyed the fuck out of me. <laughs> I mean, he was probably one of my favorite bits of the, the movie, for sure. Then we also have Joma West, who plays Alice. She's essentially the debunker. She's you know, she sees their, their videos and she's out to prove, to disprove them. Now, the movie follows a series of interviews with Graham Hughes' closest friends and acquaintances. He's an ambitious vlogger who happens to capture an alleged ghost haunting one day in his flat. But shortly after receiving viral fame, he meets the darker side of it all. And man, I absolutely enjoyed this movie. It's got, if you can get through it and really like it's not a dumb it's not a dumb movie i definitely think there's a lot of cleverness into it there's a lot of intelligent things about it there's some great topics to talk about but if you can get through it you know because i believe it's intended to be taken a certain way up until the very end and after it's all done you really are left questioning man what the hell is what can be Fate. What can be like? Like Steve says in the movie at one point, you know, seeing seeing is believing, just doesn't apply anymore, which is true. And he also says while he's having an interview, you know, you know this can be faked. Well, you can be faked, and it's oh man, it it really left me wondering how easily things can be faked and how things can be just manipulated. Another thing I really took away from this movie is its social media uh, commentary. Whew. This movie blew me away just with one little segment, and it kind of opened my eyes a little bit because I kind of felt like, holy shit, am I addicted? <laughs> There's a part in the movie where they're talking to a doctor, um, and he's going over addiction to social media. He uses analogies as gambling and mainly drugs like heroin. He uses this really great analogy, I thought, and it's all about like... When your phone buzzes, this is all from the movie I remember. When your phone buzzes and you hear that little no notification sound, you see that little red dot, or you hear the bell, like little micro dosage of dopamine gets sent to your head and it's telling you, oh, this is good. And it's true, you know, whenever you, my, I never, I hear my phone and I'm like, oh shit, let me see what's going on. Bing, I instantly try to like, and, it's, it's, and if I don't get to it right away, there are times where I'm just, I'm just like, man, I, I want to check my phone, what was that? And it just blew me away. But he goes on and saying about how it's the same thing with drug users. When they're taking heroin, they get that shot and they're just feeling good. But what happens when the effects are reversed? So every time he's getting notifications in the movie, Graham Hughes, which is constantly, you know, because he's a vlogger, he's getting, he has a viral video. Every time he gets a notification and reads it, it's a negative comment. So every time he gets happy, but it's instantly sh like shot down because it's it's telling him like some of the worst shit you can think of, like go kill yourself, you know, I you know you suck, and it he also analogy he uses as an he also uses that analogy with heroin. Imagine if a heroin user was doing that, but every time he injected, it would just he would feel like shit, and it just it just broke it down into a way that I never really like thought about that concept before and it, this is not a dumb movie this was very well thought out and it's very clever it's got a great message on just those two things alone you know you know mental trauma is another thing they kind of touch up on you know internet shaming is another thing and how that can lead to one person's health oh i definitely recommend you just you know just be open-minded and just try to 
don't think about it too much, but it should just come naturally if you're really paying attention. As well as there's a lot of good use of practical effects. You know, there's like things moving, there's things falling off the wall. There's a really good scene at the end with the, you know, the main guy. I don't want to spoil anything, but I just, I gotta, you have to appreciate something like this. There's a lot of effort, there's a lot of love, and a lot of DIY in this movie. But with that being said, there are just a couple things that I had to nitpick because I'm a found footage fiend. Now, and I guess on my first initial viewing, there were some scenes that I I felt were a little too perfect, too on the nose. They're scripted, you know. I, I prefer where they're just random, random mumble jumble. There were scenes where I felt it was just a little too scripted at times, too perfect. Dialogue, the dialogue was going where it needed to go and immediately. But like I said, this was my first initial viewing. And then after I was done I and I watched it a couple times for my review, I feel like that was probably on purpose. But I can't spoil anything, but I just have, if I had to nitpick, this is one of the, the few things that I didn't like about it too much. Now, I definitely have no shame in nitpicking at this. And I will admit, it was, this movie is presented in a series. It's a mockumentary as well as we are watching vlogs you know, uploaded by this guy. And there are times where you hear the, and you see it in the subtitles, ominous sound. And it's like a sound effect and then jump scare. Now, I will, like I said, I can admit to saying this is a vlog style movie where it can, obviously it could have been edited in for the purpose of the movie to kind of like convey the audience into believing it even more. But for me, I can easily do with that sound without that sound effect. That's just my personal take on that. So with that being said, let's get right into the ratings. As you know, we have six criteria that we go with, and the first one we're looking at, reason for filming. I'm giving this one a 9.5 due to its vlog style, its mockumentary style, and it, they're trying to, he's trying to capture a ghost, you know? So he's always constantly recording or talking about something. Believable cinematography. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a 9.5 because there are times where there are just a few moments, a few times where things are a little too perfect, but it's a vlog style movie. You've Like even me, I had to set this up, but there are other times where the camera angle's a little off, or a lot more times where the camera angle's a little more off, feels a lot more raw, especially during this one scene towards the end. Now we have found footage purity. So because of that little, for me at least, because of that little ominous sound, now there is music in this movie, but it, goes so well with the tone. This is another, like if you've seen another movie like Murder, Death, Koreatown, for instance, that has music in it. And I think it fits per perfectly well in with the movie. But there, I can definitely see people just listening to it and just thinking, why, why is there music in this? Because you're watching a vlog, that's why. Or you're watching a mockumentary style movie with interviews. This is why I think this movie kind of takes the found footage subgenre and it, it evolves a little bit because we're doing it through a new way, screen life, if you will. You're looking and we're watching vlogs. So, but that being said, that ominous sound effect really kind of kicks it down for, for me at least. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it an 8.5. All right, we have believable acting here. I'm gonna give that one an 8.5 as well because like I said, there were some scenes that I felt too, that were just too on the nose. They were too perfect in dialogue and structure towards the story, progressing at least. And I get it because I think in the overall picture, it's, it's intended to be like that. But for your first initial viewing, you're most likely gonna get that impression. Next, we have immersion and realism. I'm giving this one a 9.0. Due to the interview style, it felt very authentic. Um, and I really prefer a mockumentary over found footage or when they can do them both really well i love but mockumentaries are so ca can be so incredibly captivating so when this one was in doing interviews i was well invested into the story i, I was very in it the whole time <sighs> last but not least we have the plot criteria which i'm gonna give this one a 10 baby it's take on just social media alone i feel like deserves such praise to this movie because a lot of people need to see this i needed to see this to be like yo okay is this me i need to step i need to take it back i cannot be addicted it's structured very well in a very unique vlog mockumentary style and it's ending for me really left me thinking about you know how easily things can just be manipulated into believing into just like like Steve said in the movie, seeing is believing just does not apply anymore. Averaging everything up to a 9.1. Highly recommend checking this movie out. It's currently streaming on Amazon Prime Video.
So huge special thank you to Vito Marchese, who wrote our opening and closing theme song, Leave This Place With Me, performed by Kayla's Clone. And you can also check out Kayla's Clone's website at kaylasclone.com. And their web address will be listed in our end credits as well. So with that being said, everybody, I'm your found footage fiend, Fred. I hope you've enjoyed me just listening and rambling on about found footage movies. It's something I absolutely love. Probably without a doubt, not even probably, my favorite genre. And please don't forget to subscribe to us. We would really appreciate it. If you've seen this movie, I personally would love to know. Please be sure to leave a comment down below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. I love talking about found footage. So don't be shy. Let me know what you thought about this movie. Let me know if you, what you thought about me. If you think I'm just rambling on, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Have a good one. Oh.